Mahatma Gandhi once said, first, they ignore you. Then, they laugh at you. Then they fight you. Then you win. And in most instances, this saying rings true. However, what Gandhi doesn't mention here is that you only win if you actually have a sound, solid principle or idea to win with, a point which seems to be lost on the creationist movement. And so it is with this dissection of Darwin's Difficulties, an anti-science video by the laughably and unprofessionally named Revolution Against Evolution. Once again, the futile quest to prove the inerrancy of the Bible will rear its ugly head, and this persistent assault on reason and dignity will show that for all the mockery and retaliation creationists receive, they will never win. This is Venomous Woe, and I will be eating your brains out with a rusty spoon. Welcome to Revolution Against Evolution. I'm your host, Doug Sharp. And we call us Rich Gear, and uh, Darwin is on the menu today, right, Doug? Nope, Darwin's not on the menu today. You are. Anyway, this, this subject, Doug, Darwin, uh, you talk about the issues that he has with his own theory. Right, and I, uh, I was looking into the origin of species, and this is uh, Ray Comfort's uh, edition of the origin of species, the 150th anniversary edition. Because Ray Banana Man Comfort is totally a reliable resource, right? Yeah, but to his credit, though, Comfort puts... Well, it's a little bit of an abridged version. It doesn't put a lot of the geology that 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 he had in the in the original edition. But he's got pretty much his all of his theory. It's 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 out there to read the read it. You know, in mm -hmm. context, it's not making quotes and people can accuse people taking it out of context. He actually puts the whole book, yeah, the origin the of the species, there. there. But he has some he has some uh, some notes on it. So yeah. Wait. It's an abridged version of the origin of species that omits the geology of Darwin's theory, but it puts the whole theory out there? Okay, how many revolutions on the mental hamster wheel did you have to do in order for that to make sense? And, and so I uh, was looking through this uh, specifically to see if there's, uh, I could find what I was talking about, uh, uh, specifically the, uh, Darwin's finches on the Galapagos Islands. You know? Oh yeah. Okay. And uh, what I instead found was this chapter that he wrote, uh, uh, Difficulties on Theory, which... Uh, that's, that's actually a good chapter, yeah. And uh, here are some of the difficulties that Darwin had with his own theory, and um, he, th he thought that he might have had some answers, but it uh, turns out that... Um, uh, the answers he the, had weren't answers. The answers uh, he had weren't very good. Okay, let me make this clear to you and to anyone else who wants to play the fallacious logic game. Darwin's theory of evolution does not depend on Darwin. Ideas transcend people. Your proposition that Darwin had difficulty with his own theory means nothing to the theory itself. The idea can easily be verified and proven by others, which is what happened with evolution. To pretend otherwise is to commit ad hominem and to forfeit your right to be taken seriously. Here's the first one. He says, firstly, why, if species have descended from other species, uh, by intense, insensibly fine gradations, do we not find everywhere seen innumerable transitional forms? Why is uh, not all nature in confusion instead of the species being as we see them well defined? Yeah, so what is his answer that he, that he gives for it? You... Well, he, he says that uh, the fossil record is incomplete. Right, and this was. 1859 when he came up with this right. and uh, we've had he said and you know, his hope was that uh, you know as the people did more exploration they would uh, find more uh, transitional forms and species and uh, it would uh, uh, cooperate his theory and that's exactly what happened or are you going to pretend otherwise well uh, it has done anything but let's put it that's give away the fine give away the the the, 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 yeah. the give away the, the, the yep you're going to pretend otherwise Predictable. In 100, over 150 years of since this theory, they've excavated, and in no small part have done uh, a lot of excavation for the, for the purpose of doing, to do just what Darwin thought should happen, try to find the missing links. How long, I'm growing up, you heard about the missing links all the time. Now, granted, a lot of people think about that in terms of the missing fossil between human beings and apes, right, or whatever, and, or ape-like hominids, but, um, it, it, but missing links are in all branches of the, they're just everywhere. Uh, Lubinow says it's more like a lot of bushes now, 
rather than mm -hmm. one little fossil tree. And the reason why is because you, they keep, the more you keep discover, you keep finding more missing links. Mm -hmm. And you keep finding, you, 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 but even with the fossil tree, when they had this nice little theory, you had this, all this stuff at the ends, and then all these missing, you know, missing stuff that, that supposedly led to them, because they don't have it, and they've never found it. Just because they haven't found a transition now does not mean they can't find it later. As an example, let's use the hippo. It was thought that hippos were relatives of pigs because of how their teeth looked, among other reasons. Then, in the 50s, it was proposed that whales were close relatives of hippos because the proposition considered that whales belonged to a group called artiodactyls, which also include cows, goats, and you guessed it, hippos. The proposal had a hard time getting off the ground due to inconclusive evidence. Then, some bones of ancient whales were dug up in Pakistan, and scientists found the connection between whales and hippos. That connection was found in the ankles of the skeletons, which were very similar to other artiodactyls, like hippopotami. Amazing what a little Google search can find. Well, what you have with the things that you don't uh, have evidence for, you have, uh, you know, wishful thinking. You have Pot, meat, kettle. Yeah, just those stories they make up, they, they may, as they call them, uh, just kind of ad, ad uh, hoc explanations for why they're not there or what the thing should look like. For instance, the, the missing link between, between uh, the reptile and, or if you will, the dinosaur and the bird. Uh, what? Missing link between dinos and birds not found? Ever heard of Changyu Raptor Yangi? Four-winged dinosaur with feathers? Fossils found in China? Anyone home? Right, you know, as things uh, started, with the, you know, they jumped into the tree, but there's no partial bird dinosaur thing there, or a reptile thing, as much as they try to make uh, morphological similarity, uh, you know, by claws and things of that nature, but... Is this guy seriously trivializing the importance of morphological similarities in taxonomy? How else are we supposed to determine if species are relatives of each other? Good grief. Yeah, it's interesting because, you know, when, when Darwin was around, the idea of the of the living cell is about as complicated as sort of a, like a blob of, like a sort of a soft marble or or blob of jelly or something. They didn't really understand it like we do today. It was infinitely it's infinitely more complex the things we know today about it than what Darwin in his day. So I can I can forgive him a little. I mean, even though I know he had an agenda, and and he even knew his agenda was really anti God and mm -hmm. anti Christian, if you will. He had an agenda. Give me an H! Give me a Y! Give me a P! O! C! Give me an R! Give me an I! Give me an S! Y! Exclamation point! What's the spell? Hypocrisy! Here's what I found out that's very interesting is that uh, Darwin actually misidentified them as finch finches. They're oh. actually tanagers. Say what? Darwin's finches are tanagers? Where the fuck did you get this information from? Uh, but anyway, um, I, I kind of like, uh, you know, when we were talking about the, uh, the missing links, uh, there was one uh, evolutionist that uh, said, I hate the term missing link because each time we discover a new species, we create two more. Okay, you got me. I can't find that quote. If you would be so kind as to say who said it and in what context, that would be lovely. Thanks. We've always uh, had this little thing uh, of uh, uh, forks evolving from spoons. Yeah, uh, the spoon, we yeah. Would, uh, <laughs> uh, we would line up their silverware in a little sequence. Yeah, a spork so they, in the middle, you know? be able to uh, uh, show that there's a progressive sweet sequence between different things, uh, showing uh, uh, a relationship of that of some sort. Right. But there are millions of such progressive sequences available on the web. Heck, you're looking at one right now! But, uh, but we're really viewing with uh, all the different species, and this is what I, Darwin observed, is that there are uh, common uh, features and functions that uh, uh, is common to, in all, all of life, and they, uh, they do different things, but it's all the same bottom line structure. And what it speaks of is uh, a common uh, creator, a common designer. I was going to say, not no, a common ancestor. ancestor. But the point of it is, is yeah, a common designer as opposed to a common ancestor being used for common purposes, 
makes sense that you have similarities of, of organs and, and, uh, and a morphological and even, even on, on a cellular level, you have similarities for certain things it's that have like happened. It's like the design of flight, you know, yeah. like we have uh, bats, birds, insects, and uh, flying reptiles, and yeah. uh, you have four different kinds of uh, designs, but it's the same designer that uh, uh, incorporated those in See, four and, different ways. Right, I mean, and that... Wait, are you seriously proposing that the wings of birds, bats, and insects are all similar because they fly? That's like saying Dumb and Dumber, V for Vendetta, Aliens, and Citizen Kane are all similar because they're movies. Those different designs are so different, they're barely comparable. And this is your grand evidence for a creator? Someone shoot me, please. And what gets me is, is how often, and Darwin did this as well, they, they anthropomorphize nature. Mm -hmm. and, and if you want natural selection, it almost has a creative power in and of itself, as though it's working on nature to create things. But at the same time, they want the cake and eat it too, Doug. They say, well, it's random chance. There's no intelligence behind any of it. Never once saw a creationist that didn't misrepresent their opponent's position. And thanks to that quip, you can join the others in that proud creationist tradition. Evolution is random chance? Seriously? They say that on the one hand, yet everything they do seems to smack them. Because everything inside of us, Doug, knows this thing, you know, what's the old expression? If it looks like a duck, it quacks like a mm -hmm. duck, it's probably a duck. If it looks like design and, and acts like design, it's probably been designed, you know. The so we should determine truths about the universe based on our intuition? Okay, let's start with caecilians. They look like worms, they burrow like worms, so they must be, oh, wait. The idea that of the, the blind watchmaker, so to speak, you know, the, you know, the, or, you know, the idea that the, the, if you have a watch, you know, you, you, the blind watchmaker was trying to say it just happened by blind chance, but it, a blind watchmaker never would make a watch. It couldn't you know, do it. Could, and could, what would be the purpose of it, Doug? Why would you want to make a watch? Well, I guess if it was Braille, you know what I mean? But I mean, why would you want to have a watch that you had to look at if you're blind? It makes no sense at all. Hello, I'm Mr. Literal, and I have no understanding of analogy or metaphor. Thirdly, can instincts be acquired and modified through natural selection? There's just uh, thousands of different examples of, uh, of th things of that sort where you have instinct, inbred intelligence. Sure, the, homie, the homie instinct of the monarch butterfly. They, they don't last very, you know, they last what, what, one, one season from they turn into a, this caterpillar and, the, and, and they go into the chrysalis and come out and they have these patterns, they fly to South America and then, then and they come back. I mean, that's amazing Doug, how they know to do that. There is a thing called genetic memory. Animals can pass down certain learned behaviors onto their offspring in their DNA. This has been demonstrated in mice when researchers made mice afraid of a certain smell and discovered that their offspring had more receptors to the smell than normal. It's not unfeasible that the butterflies can know where to go based on some gene. I'll admit that this is not really proof of anything, but it's worth thinking about. Anything else, Doug? Yeah, fourthly, how can we account for species when crossed being sterile and producing sterile offspring? Whereas the, when varieties are crossed, the fertilities are unimpaired. And so what, uh, what he's saying is that uh, uh, the species can't uh, cross and, uh, and interbreed. No. Repeat after me. Evolution is not hybridization. Uh, there is one here. Uh, here's what he said about organs of extreme perfection and complication. To suppose that the eye, with all its inimitable contrivances for adjusting the focus to different distances, for emitting different amounts of light, and for the correction of spherical and chromatic aberration could have been formed by natural selection seems, I freely confess, absurd to the high, highest possible degree. Yeah. I mean, and guess what? It is absurd to the highest possible degree. I mean... Not this shit again. Look, the evolution of the eye is well documented. Just look at this pic and see the stages. Or better yet, do your own research. You should have done so before you started this video. What I tell people too, you know, the Darwinian explanation of things, even the neo-Darwinian explanation, does not explain how something that's non-living becomes living. Right. I mean, Doug, that's an insurmountable thing. There's that misrepresentation again. Evolution was never about the origin of life from non-living matter. It is about the diversity of life. Game over, try again.
And, it, and you know, <clears throat> creationists that off again get accused of being stupid because they, they, they say, well, you know, evolution is only a theory. Mm-hmm. And of course the scientist says, oh, you're just a moron. We, when we mean my theory, I mean it's so obviously, you know, obviously you can't prove everything, but it's so obviously, it's been proved by so many different things, it's basically a fact. I said, no, then it'd be called a law. Aw, the creationist thinks he knows the difference between laws and theories. Isn't that cute? Okay, here's the thing. Laws are single statements meant to show that one thing or group of things will happen under certain circumstances every single time. Theories are collections of information that shows how multiple things are related. One does not supersede the other. They fill different niches of scientific inquiry. So yes, please remove head from ass. For instance, the law of abiogenesis, Doug, where life always comes from life, and life will never come from non-life. And that's exactly what Darwin contradicts. The Darwinian theory has to have, and, and, and when you do that, they'll bait and switch you and say, well, no, evolution has to do with increasing complexity among things that are already alive. I, I beg to differ. First of all, you can beg to differ all you want and accuse biologists of baiting and switching all you want. It doesn't change the truth that evolution doesn't even attempt to answer that question. Second of all, the law of biogenesis was meant to explain how spontaneous generation doesn't occur. Not that abiogenesis is impossible. That's strike three on the misrepresentation meter They only tell you that when you, when you catch them, okay? Right. They only say that when you catch them in that. But if you don't catch them in that, they will deal with cosmological evolution. They will deal with non-living things coming to spontaneous generation, which mm-hmm. is what they would. Evolution demands spontaneous generation. No, it fucking doesn't. Evolution demands something to go from simplicity to complexity by adding new genetic information, which is, again has never been seen in science. Clearly you don't understand how insertion mutations work. Right. And Darwin had a religious uh, thing here, or if you will, an anti-religious bent. Right. Basically we talked about this as his own life. Well, number one, his, his grandfather was pretty much an evolutionist, Erasmus Darwin. And he was raised in sort of a Unitarian or kind of a, I would call it not a very strong Christian background idea, even though they said he was training to be a minister when he was younger. But the fact is when his daughter died, I think he basically, he basically rejected God in, in his entirety. Mm-hmm. And, this, and this theory that he comes up with, as gracious as Darwin tried to be in his writing, mm-hmm. in this one, Descent of man, he's not so nice. He's a little bit more, a little bit more overt. In fact, a lot more overt. Yeah. Yeah. This one, he's kind of put in this pot because he knows that if you accept this theory, you're basically throwing design and intelligence outside of humanity. You're you're throwing it out. Quick, take a shot for every ad hominem you just heard. Now it's interesting that you can uh, um, uh, read Darwin's work here in, re- in this particular chapter, uh, and you can watch him. Uh, as he's contemplating these different uh, questions, uh, do a whole lot of hand waving. Pot me kettle. And when you get uh, down to it, uh, you can then, as you're reading this uh, chapter, ask the question: Is uh, has science actually come up with uh, any more solid evidence than what he had at that time? But- yes, it has. And your obvious ignorance is not an argument. This is a speculative piece of fiction that actually had some semblance of plot. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of socialism before we realize how, how bad of a political system that really is. Viva la revolution. No, no you know, socialism was derived from this. Citation needed. People know that without evolution, you basically have to go into a theistic explanation of, 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 of life. Then- wow! What a false dichotomy. People can question God without evolution. They did in the Enlightenment, over two centuries before Darwin's voyage. Evolution has nothing to do with theism, and you're deluding yourself if you think it does. But I tell people something else, like I said, look, we believe you, you, you're ultimately stuck with the uncaused first cause. And right. Doug, here's the deal. But suppose we get all the way down and we let all the uncaused first causes, and you get to human beings. All right, Doug, and somehow you not only get one, but two ape-like hominids turning into human beings. And they, and they turn, oh my gosh, fortuitously, into one man and one woman. Right. You're half a million years old and this happens, or maybe 100,000, whatever term you want to get. Why are we not all genetically retarded or extinct 300 times over? We know what happens when you inbreed too much, right, Doug? All right, well, this video is going south super fast. I think it's time for us to go. If you really want to see the rest of this video or see the video in its entirety, 
I'll have a link to it in the description. But before we go, let me say something to these two. Listen to yourselves. Seriously. Attempt to comprehend what you two are saying with a critical eye. You two seriously think that you know better than biologists that have devoted years, nay, decades of their lives to studying life on Earth? You seriously think that there is some grand conspiracy to hide the truth? You seriously think that your logic is sound and your opponent's positions are fiction? Get over yourselves, please! It wouldn't be so bad if this only affected you. People can say whatever asinine things they want, free speech and all. But here's the thing, your sentiments do not only affect you. They are poisoning the well for future generations. By turning your back on established science, the thing our entire modern civilization is built around, you cripple the ability of our descendants to truly understand the natural world. If you have any shred of dignity or self-respect left, you will look inward and examine your beliefs under the microscope. Think, learn, challenge your presuppositions. You might be surprised at what you find. This has been the Rusty Spoon. Get a tetanus shot before use. I see men of age spewing forth lies. The truth be damned, our God will rise. And I think to myself, what a terrible duo.